Hey, welcome back. Best Hi. Wow. Well, we're back. We're back. Welcome. Welcome. Episode four. Epi four. We talking. Are we? Bassmaster College Series recap for the year. Yes, we are. I'm hyped. <laughs> Going to be a good exciting. time. Going to be exciting. I'm a little exciting. sad it's over. A little sad. Definitely sad it's over. It's been over, but I'm Already still can't wait sad. for the next season. It's going to be exciting. We're, we're going to do a whole other episode whenever that schedule comes out. But oh, that'll be a good episode. That could Definitely be in like tune in 2025 for when the 2020 series schedule is released. Yeah. yeah so. uh, I'm thinking end of January tournament. We'll find out about it in... January. End of November. <laughs> <laughs> Have a whole month to plan to yep. travel to it. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we're we're back. This is uh, episode four, of Bass Now Radio, presented by Sunrise Bassin. And we hope you guys are enjoying. Yeah, we we we've received some good comments about what we could do better and stuff. So we appreciate it. Keep it coming, please. Keep, keep sharing. We love it. And uh, well, let's jump right into what's. Our question of the week. Our question of the week is from our least favorite viewer, um, our worst friend, Bryson. So ha. no thanks to you on the question. But his question is about colors. Colors. How do we feel that, about that, colors? That's the question. That's a, colors, colors question mark. Colors question mark. Colors that's what I wrote question down. mark. That's what I got. Uh, colors. Well, <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's pretty simple. You really... And there's like a million colors out there, uh-huh. but I feel like you really only need like maybe three or four. Interesting. Dark water. You need your blacks and your black and blue. Okay. Dirt, dirty dark water. Okay. Always stick to that color. Okay. That's my opinion. Other than that, you fish in clearer water. I think you need your green pumpkin. That's a good bet. Green pumpkin Always. for everything. And uh, if you happen to find yourself up north, I think you need to have goby. Yeah. I think Gobi's key up there. Huh? So that's my opinion. Four colors. Do I have more than four colors on my boat? You betcha. I you. think so. I have about I think he does, folks. 30 colors. But if there are four key colors, yeah. they will work for just about anywhere. Those are, your, those are your four colors. And I mean, even the Gobi color, I still use that at Norman. Right. And it works. So. Right. <laughs> but what, what do you got? What are you thinking? If it ain't green pumpkin and it ain't black... It ain't a color. It ain't a color. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, that wow. is a good starting place. If you're just getting into fishing, which I, some of you might be, you really don't need to buy much more than green pumpkin or black. But um, as far as soft plastics go, I think, like you said, green pumpkin and black. Like honestly, you don't. That's pretty you straightforward. You don't need much more yeah. than that to start. Like it's a good starting place. But uh. <laughs> Um, hard baits, I kind of, I get into a little more, obviously soft baits too. I and mean, there's times where I, I always carry, uh, chartreuse dip dye with me. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I've kind of gone away from buying like stuff with chartreuse tips right. to just tipping it myself yeah, with exactly. chartreuse dip. So exactly. Or, that can be, or that can be great or something like that. Um, I've actually found that like in the springtime, early springtime, red or orange on like a jig tip yeah, yeah. can be great. Um, with a jig, I like to stick to browns. Uh, obviously that changes. I don't, I mean, I don't know how much color matters. Um, some people obviously believe it does a lot more than others. Um, yeah, I mean, you're gonna, I'll, you're gonna I'll, find your... I'll tell this story. Uh, we were at the Choan river. Um, you can go and see the YouTube video on it. It was me and my buddy Marshall and he was throwing like green pumpkin with like a black and gold flake for like a majority of the day. And I don't know, maybe we, maybe it was just like coincidence, but he caught nothing on it. Like I think he had like one bite. He switched over to it a, could just be because a Marshall green Marshall. pumpkin black flake without gold. It was just straight like green pumpkin, and caught a fish like third cast. So yeah. I don't know, maybe it, no, I, I think I, there was some place where I've it does seen matter. It so. where I was throwing green pumpkin purple all day long, picked up green pumpkin red, caught him. Yeah. So yeah, there are definitely. Some places, but I mean, in terms of like, unless you're like fishing there for a tournament and you're like, you're looking to do the best you possibly could do, I think for a beginner you're gonna or fish, anyone yeah. that's just looking to fish, I think that those are your four colors. I mean, obviously you can get specific for the lakes. Yeah. I mean, I know that there are some lakes in Rhode Island that there's a, there's a color from Biz Bates called Summer Craw, which is green pumpkin on the top 
and then the bottom of the craw is like the like neon short yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it does fantastic there and like only there like i've right. never really had too much luck anywhere else with it yeah. but it kills there in the summer so yeah they, they can get specific i've but. found that um and i i've done a little bit of research on this and found some interesting things on it um purple like a purple or pink for smallmouth like a like a green pumpkin with a purple flake i've found that that's that can be lights out like it can really make a difference um i've read that like bait fish natural or not just bait fish but forage naturally give off like a purple sheen huh. so i or gleam whatever the freak the word is but um i've read that so i don't know if there's something to that but i've found that purple works really well for smallmouth um I, I mean, honestly, most times down south, green pumpkin's going to get the job done. You're yeah. going to get a bit on it. Yeah. Um, but as far as hard baits go, I like, I usually try and stick with a few things. I've seen, I, I watched a couple seminars back in the day when I was in like high school and before then. Um, Mark Menendez, who else was there? Kevin Short, guys that were talking about hard baits, crank baits, jerk baits, stuff like that. And I kind of really stuck to what they said, and I've really, I, it's kind of a belief of mine that you don't need many colors. You need white. You need some kind of translucent. Some and, kind of chartreuse. Right? Yeah, not even chartreuse. Uh, chrome. Chrome. Something shiny. Something shiny. At least for jerk baits. Jerk baits, real sunny day, clear. Um, so you know what I'm thinking? Sunny day. When I'm thinking like crank baits and square bills, I'm thinking your sexy shad. Yeah. Or red. And some kind of back. chartreuse, yeah. yeah. That's a, that same. I mean, I when it comes to um, can't think rattle traps. I carry a crap ton. I carry, I carry like three or four colors. Always a red. Always a chrome. A color to be named later, and something for bluegill. <laughs> wow, it's white. <laughs> I'm white. a big believer in a white trap. No white. You haven't trap. tried it. Haven't try tried it. it. But don't tell he your friends. He preaches it. Don't I tell haven't your tried friends. it. So. Eric, uh, the intern, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, obviously, like you get on some of them Texas lakes, the barfish seems to work well. Uh, citrus, citrus shad, I don't found get me can be started excellent. on barfish. Um, so yeah, this, I mean, colors are colors. If you if you believe heavily in that, you need to fine tune your color. I mean, I'm I'm more of a believer in go and find active fish, personally. Like, I'd rather go and find fish that are biting than the fish that are only going to bite on one right, color. So let's talk about some guys that found some fish active and used the right color. What about the guys that didn't find any active fish? There were a lot of those in our first event. But there Mass were. College, so I was one of them. <laughs> Lake Norman. <laughs> Lake Norman. Yeah, we're gonna, talk, Norman. we're gonna talk about the college series. We uh, went down to the Bassmaster College so if series this year. If you haven't been tuning in with us. We are from UNC Charlotte. Yes. Literally down the road from Lake Norman. So we were semi-pumped that it was there, mainly because we wouldn't have to drive very far. Yeah. The other part of us was like, yeah, Lake Norman's going to stink this time of year, and it kind of did. Kinda well, it should have been good. It, it really should have been good. It, the week before. Yeah, Norman is always supposed to be good. It never is. The week before, it was excellent. And we had a cold front, of course, and it shut it down. It was, it was February frigid. 21st frigid. through the 23rd. The week before, there was a Carolina uh, team trail tournament that was one of 23 pounds on Norman, which is absurd. That's a big bag. Uh, I think like 15th place had 16 pounds. Yeah. I mean, it was on fire the week before. I fished it that weekend, sacked up a seven-pound limit. Sacked. <laughs> I mean, I came in. So I, pr I practiced Norman a lot. Uh, and I had one limit in a lot of days of practice and that was the day. And I thought I was, I was lighting up the world, came back in, saw those results and realized how, how behind the ball I was. Um, but Norman was tough. It was, how'd you do? How'd you, what, you finished eighth? I did. I got lucky. No, I did not finish it. Cause I, I was mean, Norman busy. I, it was really hard. It was really cold. It could have been better. I like you like you said it was it was it getting was better. Frigid. But the weather conditions for that tournament were terrible. The cold front that came absolutely the weekend terrible. before it was like sixty and sunny. The Wednesday before the turn or Tuesday before the tournament, whatever it was, was the, I mean I mean and I've told you this. It was frigid. I've been saltwater fishing in December for striped bass in thirty mile an hour winds and twenty degree weather 
and I was not as cold as I was on this day. It was frigid. I mean, so cold. The cold front that came through shut everything off. Um, it certainly hurt fishing. Yeah, it sucked. Like that. It was really bad. I mean, so, you look at the results. So for Norman, the results, your top three for Norman uh, were Will Nichols and Jamin Phillips. Jacksonville U. Jacksonville U. Yep. Kind of hard to believe a Florida team did that well in such a frigid. Them guys night. were cranking. Were they cranking? They were cranking well, up the they river. They found them. <laughs> and they were catching big Alabama spots. Um, I don't know a ton about this, but guys talk about the two different strains of spots. There might even be more than that. I don't know. There's Alabamas and there's Kentuckys. Norman's loaded with Kentuckys. A lot of guys were saying the fish that they were finding up the river were Alabama spots. And they were catching them cranking, and they were bigger fish. These guys had 16 pounds on day three. Uh, which second is a place. Big bag. Jacob Lewis. Nathan Doty. Nathan Doty. McKenzie. McKenzie. They had, oh, McKenzie. So, for to, for reference, thirty about 38 pounds won this tournament for three days. Yeah. It's pretty bad. These guys had, I think they had five pounds day one, and then backed it up with 15 and 16. Um, then it was 36. 35 and down the line i think let's say 12th place at 28 pounds yeah so it and was then, then our boys from you and charlotte ben hager no shaver rounded out the top three third place it was kind of expected that we'd have some unc charlotte teams just because we fish it so often we're so close yep we had four teams qualify here yeah it was a very good tournament for us very tough tournament for everyone it was bad. I mean, I so the Ben and Noah and then Willie and Jamin Phillips from Jacksonville. These guys were catching them cranking. I don't know about everyone. I mean, I know I know a lot of guys did catch a couple of fish cranking. Our buddies Nick and Trey caught a few fish tra- uh, cranking. Um, other than that, most people who I talked to were fishing, Finesse fishing slow, slow. Not even fishing slow. Like a lot of guys were doing a lot of different things. Um. Fishing brush piles. I mean, you had to. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. I mean, I caught him throwing a Ned rig on the bank and literally just not even moving it. I throw it out. I mean, like one and a half, two minute long casts. It was so bad. I think I had maybe like 16, 17 bites in three days. <laughs> it was terrific. It was bad. Glad I missed that one. Let's yeah. go with that. Yeah. Glad I missed it. But um, cool tournament. We had, let's see. I think two hundred and fifty six boats came out. So um, it was yeah. You know, it was big fish of six thirteen. That's a that's a dang big one. Second place was five ten. So that was obviously a little bit of a a fluke. But I mean, it was. Uh, I would like to see them come back to North Carolina. Norman's a great tournament lake just, just a different time of the year so well yeah i mean we had 256 boats out there and i saw maybe two or three boats yeah, it's a, day. a huge body of water so you don't it's, have to worry too much very, about running into there's people there's so much you can run into it's very there's so many different arms and creeks and stuff like that it's a cool lake uh it's not great <laughs> but i mean it's fun all right so second tournament Yes. Uh, now this one I attended, so I can speak more of this one. As did I. Smith Lake. Smith Lake. Really, Alabama. really different fishery. March twenty first through the twenty third. Yeah, it was. It was not what I expected. Absolutely not what I expected when I showed up down there. It was. I was expecting like a Alabama fishery, and it did not fish like an Alabama fishery, in my opinion. I only had one word for this place, and it was weird. Weird. <laughs> Odd. <laughs> Uh, I was those of you that were there, you know what we're talking about. It yeah. was you'd you'd be sitting against the bank in ninety feet of water. Yeah. Like I mean literally like hand on the bank. Not even bluff walls, like just normal banks. Yeah, just I normal think. banks. Like weird. It it was crazy drop offs. Uh, I was expecting the water to be a lot clearer than it was. Yeah, the Guys water will was say it was clear. Dirty. I mean, I guess for Alabama it is clear water, but it was not clear in my opinion, so I. Uh, it was weird. It was weird. Yeah, I mean, we both did. We, we finished like mid pack, both of us. Bad. And uh, mid pack is. It bad. was. It was mainly spots. Um, yeah, there were guys. So what was happening in this tournament was they were drawing the lake down every day. The lake went down. Yeah. I noticed this. Yeah, a lot of the guys noticed it. Yeah, there were guys in the top twelve who did really well flipping largemouth. I think these two teams. 10th and 12th place, uh, Montevallo and Bethel. I think they were probably I, – I, I don't remember exactly. I was listening to the weigh-in as I was driving home. Um, 
but I remember them talking about how they were flipping largemouth and there was so much to flip the first day. The second day there was less. The third day there was almost nothing. Yeah. That water was really falling. The fish were coming out of the bushes. So I um, think as the tournament progressed, the spot fishing. Yeah, the spot fishing. And that's, I mean, that's how Lucas Murphy and Mitchell Gunn got it down from Grand Valley. Yep. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure all the top three, Derek Freeman, Caleb Allgood from Clemson, and JT Russell, and Parker James from Montevello, I think they were all on that spot fight. A lot of, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think they had many large mouths. There's big spots in this place, man. These guys, Huge spots. Uh, I mean, I caught Aaron, my PB spot there. So Yeah, Aaron Denny and William Matthews from Grand Valley caught 24, tw- no, I'm sorry, 21-4, and that was straight spots. I think that's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. Um, these guys were throwing swim baits under docks in like 80 feet of water. Yeah. Oh, it was crazy. crazy like stuff. after the way we, I caught them was with chatterbait on rocky shorelines. Yeah. Um, I was doing something completely different from what these guys were doing. I honestly don't know how these guys figured out how to do what they did. Yeah. With the, I mean, they were literally tossing swim baits out there and letting them sink for like three minutes before they started reeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty wild. I mean, I would never think of that. I guess it's something that I need to think about next I, time we go to a lake like that. But I was catching a few like this. I mean, I w- what was happening? So, a little background here, at least on my end, that I'm sure nobody cares about. The weekend before this, this tournament started on a Wednesday, and the weekend before this, we were in Knoxville. Yeah, we were in Knoxville. We for were the at classic. the Bassmaster yeah. Classic. It was a blast. Uh, I love the classic. There were a lot of guys, college guys, who were there who were going straight from. I had to go back and go to class and stuff. So I ended up getting, what did I get? You practiced for like a day. I, no, I practiced for like four hours. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we I practiced, practiced like four we hours. We had a day of practice. I think you had four hours. Something yeah, like that. I showed up and just threw a mag draft all day in practice and most of the day in the tournament. Um, and I remember pulling up on my first spot. This, I, I had a bunch of bites the first and in practice on this one spot with a mag draft. So I went back with the mag draft and I'm throwing it up on the bank and I'm sitting in 30 foot. And I'm seeing fish. So I was like, oh, I took a swim bait and just chucked it out there, let it sink forever and started reeling and caught two that way. So I'm sure those guys that figured that out were doing something similar yeah. where they were fishing the bank, going around a dock saying, oh, look at that. And uh, this is a tournament where if you have like panoptics or live scope or something. I think that would be key. Would yeah. have been yeah, definitely very, would have been key. very, very key. Very key. It I was mean, a it was a cool fish tree. Would yes. love to go back. I think I'd love to go back when the fish are on the bank. Yeah, I was. I I'm not gonna lie. There were I was a couple ex- on the bank. I was expecting them to be on the bank yep. and to be hitting schooling shad. I don't know about the rest of the guys. I only found one school of shad. Yeah. in the whole place, and it was in the same spot every day. There so were guys running that. Every guy knew where it was. <laughs> there were guys running that uh waterfall pattern too. Yeah. They're yeah, going the, up in the back of creeks and throwing up on waterfalls and catching them. That which that's cool. where we were able to find bait was around the waterfall. Yep. So, I mean, th- some of those guys were able to capitalize on that. It was tough because there's a finite amount of them. So, right. if right. you weren't first at all, you probably weren't going to get there in time. Yeah. I uh I think that I I don't know. I messed up the 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 large mouth bite was definitely there on the first day because I went in one cove at the end of the day, flipped in there, missed a good one. Um, and I, then that second day, I said, I'm going to go large mouth fishing, and I noticed all the water was down. Yeah. So it was really weird for me. Um, the second day at the end of the day, if I remember correctly, you guys had an earlier check in. Yeah. I had a really late check in the second day. And the wind picked up at the end of the day. Yeah. And I got in a bank in like the last in half hour and went off on a freaking jerk bit. It was a blast. Like, <laughs> I caught a, so many 14 inches. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I think wind in this tournament would have been really helpful if it, if it blew a little bit more. Because um, at the end of the day, I caught two or three right off the bat throwing something moving in the wind. All right, now but Smith was interesting. Let's move to the one tournament that neither of us went to. Yes. We Bull only, Shoals. We went to every tournament except, except for Bull I Shoals. I went to every tournament except for Bull Shoals. You only missed Norman and uh, Bull Shoals. Um, Bull Shoals was... Uh, interesting. Yeah, interesting from what we saw. I honestly regret not going because I think it would have been awesome. Me too. These guys smashed them. It was a mixed bag. It was cool to watch. Yes. Uh, you can catch both small mouth, large mouth. We were just talking mouth. about it. Uh, here. 10 pounds a day, so 20 pounds for two days, had you in 156. That's pretty... That's pretty good. And, and there were, I think, only... 29 had you in top 12 so 
Yeah. It was tight. It was a lot of fun, it seemed like. Everybody was catching fish. Um, looked some, like a really cool tournament. Some sticks won it. Yep. Carter McNeil, Cole Floyd. There's some big names in the top They, they got here. it done there. <laughs> Definitely took that one. Yep. Uh, Joshua Boone, Blake Riley from Eastern Kentucky, and Dalton Smith. Took 48 pounds Reagan to win it. Campbellsville. It's pretty solid. That's like Finished 17 third. almost a day. I mean, it was uh, it was something to watch for sure. Uh, I think kind of anything played here. Yeah, I, it was. You could go out, fish largemouth on the bank, go deep, fish smallmouth. Yeah, it I, was really anything. <laughs> these guys won flipping bushes up the river. A lot of guys did really well dragging a net rig and fishing offshore for smallies. Um, Throwing old you Carolina. Also, that place is like yeah, I think that place is like just all lined with bushes, like everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to find something different but i think there's fish everywhere yeah from what so. it seemed like it's i mean these guys caught the hell out of them it looked like a cool tournament yes. um like i said certainly certainly wish we were there because i think it would have been awesome yeah um i mean i would i would say that i would love to see him go back there but for for NC I would guys it's such a far drive i would love to go it's like back. a 13 I, hour I'm drive there. for us <laughs> uh big fish was five and a half so, I mean, not a lot of big ones, but, I mean, a ton of fish. Here. Day one, there were 172 limits. That's that's pretty dang cool. And, like, a 200-vote tournament, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. A lot of people called them, which is cool. I mean, it, it, it seemed it, like a fun tournament. It wasn't as good as our last tournament of the year, though. I think we should spend some time talking about this one. I can spend a lot of time. St. Lawrence River. Mid-June. Spawned. Fantastic. I told everyone. Fantastic. I told everyone. <laughs> Had a blast. <laughs> so I've been to St. Lawrence now in mid-August, beginning of August, mid-June, mid-July. And this would have been this was my first time going in June. I know that Champlain, Oneida, other New York lakes, they all have their spawn at like Mid to end of June. So when I saw this tournament was mid-June, I knew it was going to be. I mean, I, I told everyone. I, I'm not saying that I'm like the know-it-all here, but. He did say it was going to be very good. I knew this tournament was going to be He said it was going to be so good, he convinced other guys from UNC Charlotte to drive up there and fish it. Despite the fact that it was one heck of a drive. 14 hours. These guys drove 14 hours and did not regret it one bit. Oh, absolutely not. It was like. It was in That tournament. It was insane. I don't think anything is ever going to match that in the college series. I really don't. No, I like was the special. numbers that were brought in. There were there were are incredible. Yeah, most pro series tournament don't see r results like this because I mean this is the perfect time of year to go. Oh, it's perfect. Perfect. You can't go at a better time of year if you want to see big fish. Now, if you're against seeing spawning fish and stuff like that, I'm sorry, but uh, this was fun. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, I mean, if you had 20 pounds, you were eighth from last place for two days. It it was, I mean, we came after in. After day one, 20 pounds had you in 85th place. We came in and we felt like we had close to 20 pounds on day one. And we were like, oh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be in the top 50. We were like 150th. It was crazy. Yeah. I had almost 23 pounds on day one and I was in 40th. Yeah. It was nuts. It was unbelievable. Nuts. Crazy tournament. Uh, if you want to see how the fishing was done, I literally just posted the entire like practice and tournaments on the YouTube channel and you can check it out. I mean, huge, large, uh, huge small mouth. Yeah. And if you could find the large mouth, the large mouth were big. This is, there's <laughs> a reason why this is the best fishery on planet Earth. Yeah. I mean, it proved keep it in, in mind, that tournament. Keep in mind that they named this the best fishery on planet Earth. Well, in America before these results came out. Yeah. So, I mean, this place is very special. You look at what the elites do there. You look at what we did there. Nuts. Jackson Carroll and Brian Kurtz of Sam Houston State won this tournament with 72-13. That's day 24 total. a day. Yeah. 24 a day. All small <laughs> now. That's ridiculous. Um, man, what a, what a fun tournament. Uh, you needed 22 and a half just to make the top 12 a day. Yeah. So you needed 44 plus to make the top 12. Crazy. 
Crazy. I mean, just a dominant tournament. That's more for two days. I mean, look, here, let's Norman see how many had guys. in three days. Here's wow. I was <laughs> I was <laughs> I went to go see who had like what twenty pounds a day would get you, and forty two is myself uh, <laughs> in fifty sixth place. So fifty six guys had at least twenty a day. That's pretty nuts. Pretty ridiculous. Nuts. So what we were doing there, uh, in case none of you want to watch my YouTube videos, I think betting you should. Small betting small mob. We're everywhere. Yeah. Your key was finding the big ones. Yeah. Um, and getting to the big ones before other people was huge. Uh, and then finding some off the wall stuff. Yeah. You had to have something in your back pocket because mm -hmm. essentially for, for anyone that does, didn't know what happened, they, because of high water, they closed us off. We couldn't go through the lock. We couldn't lock to the rest of the river. So we were all confined into a very small portion of if the river. If they unlocked the rest of the river, you would have seen probably a 28-pound limit, and it probably would have taken close to 80 to win this tournament for three days. I mean, Not kidding at all. We were closed into such a small area. At one point, this is I was staring at like seven boats. Yeah, this is 100-plus so. miles of river, and we were combined to fishing 25 of it. Yeah. So you unlock the rest of that river, and you're talking about a lot of untapped potential. I mean, it would have been even more ridiculous than it was. That's a little asterisk to put on this tournament that not a lot of people will remember when they look back at these results. I mean, I for sure think but, we're going back. Oh, I hope so. For sure. I'm hoping this year. I hope Maybe so. the year after. But I would love to see what happens when they open the rest of that. It'll river. get silly. It'll get so silly. Because really the big thing was is people were running out of fish. I mean, that's what happened to me. Yeah. On, on day two, I ran out well, of fish. Well, here's another thing. I know another thing that happened on day two that caused a lot of struggle. I mean, like I said, you had 85 guys with 20 pounds on the first day. And only 55 ended up having 20 a day. Yeah. So there was a pretty good fall off. Um, the reason for that is the like weather you said, changed. Running out of fish. Running out of fish the and the weather, weather changed. changed. So all those smallmouth that you were sitting there looking at, it got rainy, it got windy, and it got very hard to see fish. Very hard. And that had a lot to do with why I think the weights fell off. Um, something that I should have and everybody should have, and I'm sure the guys that won did figure out, um, is that when that rain and that that wind started happening, there were a lot of roaming fish in practice. Yeah. Those fish probably activated in the tournament. I didn't get to see much of it. Um, I didn't really think of that. We caught we caught a couple on day two due to the roamers. Um, it was something we noticed in our first day of practice. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you there were like there the first day of practice, but the weather was crap. Mm-hmm. Oh my it god! It was crap. Like we fished to like that was noon bad. Yeah. and had to get off the lake because the lake it was it was, like, five it was like four and five foot waves, yeah. and we noticed a pretty good pattern with jerk baits with the Roman fish. So I yeah. mean, definitely figuring out this kind of like niche things. On, you need backups if the weather's going to change yeah. for these baiters. I caught baiters, a four and a so. half day too on a freaking chatter bait. It's pretty wild. <laughs> uh, so I mean, my biggest came on that first day. It was close to it was like a five. And it was on a joke bait, so. I mean, I, I tell this to everybody when, when they ask how ridiculous it was. On day one, I had probably like 21 in the boat. And I was trying to find more fish. Everywhere I went that I marked fish in practice, they were all gone. So I just pulled up on a nothing bank. Like nothing. Just I knew there were rock boulders on it. Pulled up on it. And they were there. Heavy. Not a lot of big ones, but there were so many fish. I had a 3.7 in my live well that I was trying to call out for a 4. I was weighing all my fish. So I had a 3.7. I caught 15 fish in between 3.7 and 4.2. 15. 15 calls. 3.75, 3.78, 3.8, 3.2. I 3.82. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And, like, so many other ones that were under that. It was stupid. Like, the amount of 3.5-plus pound smallmouth that you were catching if you went to this event was ridiculous. It was insane. Ridiculous. I mean, our buddies from, uh, from whatchamacallit, what's their school? Justin and Collins from Winthrop. These guys didn't have a big motor. Yeah, they, they fished they on they the trolling up. motor and caught 17 a day. Good on those guys, by I the mean, way. Good on them. <laughs> ridiculous. They stuck with it, and they made the best the of it. The fishing was ridiculous. It was a blast. If you ever get a chance, guys, 
go to St. Louis. Go. I've been playing. I've been telling people this for four or five years now. If you ever get a chance to go to this place, go. It is unlike anywhere you'll ever go. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, you talk about the Thousand Islands region down by Alexandria Bay. The it, it, the scenery is gorgeous. The fishing is unbelievable. Um, if you won't get bored of catching four pound smallmouth, go into a back bay with a frog and go catch fifty largemouth on a frog. Yeah. I mean, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's that good. It's so good. Um, the water is so clear, and we're not recording, are we? What? No, we're good. Um, oh, let's uh let, let's hold this conversation. Because oh. I want to talk about Oneida, which is part of the Pro Series update. We do want to talk about so Oneida. So let's jump to the Pro Series update, and then we're going to go back to St. Lawrence. Pro Series update, people. Let's go to the Pro Series update. All right, so before we finish talking about St. Lawrence, because I, I want to tie it into Oneida, which is part of the Pro Series update, let's hear the Pro Series update. What, what, what's going on, man? There's not a lot. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> the Pro Series update is very weak this week. Wow. Very, very weak. Weak this week. Um, wow. It is uh. quite lacking. Bassmaster, there's an open on Oneida that opened up today. That'll be exciting to look at. That's a fun fishery. Um, I got a buddy. What's up, Trevor? Who's hammer out there. He's going to be paying close attention. He wishes he was there. Uh, I wish Don't I we was all. there Don't we all. catching three and a half pound smallies, but it should be interesting. Um, Oneida is a really cool lake where you can win on largemouth and smallmouth. Um, it's different than somewhere like the St. Lawrence. A lot of shoals, no current. So you're really fishing grass beds, grass lines on top of shoals, or you're fishing. That's a really interesting place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Or you're fishing grass, like not on the shoals, just grass lines and stuff, catching big largemouth. Um, Stanley Sidepeck won a couple of years back just on largemouth. So you can really win on anything up there. Um, there's been a couple of elites out there. It's a good tournament. It's, it's going to be, it's a really cool lake. Um, interesting lake and can be very tough, but in September it should be kind of weird. You got that end of summer bite. Um, these guys will catch them though. I mean, what, what you're going to see, I know it's a big community hole lake. So you're probably going to see pretty nice solid weights today and you're going to see them drop the next two yeah. days. Um, but it will show out. It'll be a cool tournament. FLW. Nothing happening. Not much going on. Uh, there's a couple coasts in September. We talked about that last episode. Uh, we got the St. Lawrence coming up in two weeks, so we'll talk about that. And then three weeks from now is a Costa on the California Delta. So killer. I got those two tournaments to talk about. MLF, there's nothing going on. There's nothing going on. Don't I'm pretty know, sure that don't know, don't care. I'm pretty sure they're don't done know, for don't the care. season. Don't so. know, don't care. You don't have to talk for them for a while. Don't know, don't care. Done. Don't know, don't care. <laughs> That's not true. You are going to have to talk about them when you argue about, about yeah. this with Marshall. You're going to have to start providing MLF, MLF oh, because God. I really don't care and I really ah. don't know anything. Um, all right. So, I mean, we were just talking. About I mean, there really isn't much in the Pro Series. Uh, pay attention to Oneida. That's going to be a cool tournament. Uh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Well, I want to talk about Oneida is it's like. Upstate New York, like that whole area, I think right now that has some of the best fishing. Yeah, uh, it's one so of the, like varied. Like you we catch talked about big large mouth and big small mouth, and I feel like there's nowhere else where you can do that. We talked about um, before this episode. We were talking about which question we wanted to answer. Colors won out, but our second one was from my cousin. She was asking me about where's your favorite. What's your favorite state to fish in? It's New York, hands down. I, I think that we we York, agree on it, down. so it'd be like the most boring no conversation at all. New York right now is fabulous. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. I've been saying this for years. I mean, what what happens is, is these lakes start to get good. I mean, you talk about Gunnersville, you talk about different lakes. I'm gonna an unnamed one in North Carolina that I think is gonna be on that top 100 list soon, um, but we want to keep that quiet. So, uh, like Sharon Harris was one of them. A couple of years back, Sharon Harris put out 40 pound bags. Everyone around here knew it was a good lake, but it wasn't until it put out 40 pound bags that guys started talking about it. They're like, oh, New crap, I think we right should now. go there. Um, nobody talked about the St. Lawrence for years. It was always like top 20, which, I mean, sure is fantastic. It's good. But, but it should be number one. It, it's, <laughs> it's, New York has some of the most dynamic fishing in the country. I mean, do you, you go got, out and do anything? Yes. You anything. got the St. Lawrence, current, big smallies. Bays, big largemouth. You've got Cayuga, 
We just saw how that tournament went. You saw 25 pounds of largemouth yeah. in August. I mean, and here's another thing to note. Nobody fishes New York outside of the summertime. It's off. It's closed off to bass fishing in the spring, and in the fall, everyone thinks it's too cold, and everyone wants to go south and go catch big largemouth down south again. Dude, you want to talk about Oneida in October? 100 fish days, all three pounders, jerk baits, Car- um, not Carolina rigs, Alabama rigs, swim baits. The fishing is second to none. I honestly believe that. And what I what I love is you it's know it's crazy good. I don't I don't know if a lot of guys like feel the same way about this, but a lot of lakes that we fish around here are reservoir lakes, mm-hmm. and it's cool going up and fishing those natural lakes. It's, mm-hmm. The lakes are beautiful. I thought St. Lawrence was like you could see twenty feet down. Yeah, twenty feet, you could see a bed and drop it, and you'd wait for like five seconds for that thing to hit the bottom, but you could see it falling. Yeah. It was cool. It's it's unbelievable. There's nothing else like that. <laughs> and then there's a lot of other fisheries that never get talked about. I mean, a lot of people are going to disagree on this or have never even heard of this. The Hudson River can be fabulous. You go to the Hudson River in like November, October, you're going to catch 18 to 20 pounds of smallies in the back of creeks, cranking, dirty water. Like, what? <laughs> it's it's very diverse. You got West New York. You got Chautauqua. That's a grass fishery. Largemouth. You catch 50 fish a day out there flipping the grass. Uh, all the Finger Lakes are excellent. It's not just Cayuga. There's some little ones that you haven't heard of. Kinesis. Uh, Kiyuka. These lakes in October. Crazy named lakes. Yeah. <laughs> in October and November. Uh, I mean... Same thing as Oneida. You're going to put out 18. I saw, I think last year, I remember seeing like 24 pounds coming out of these lakes. It's And like top, te- top 10 all has 20. Yeah. These and lakes I, put out. I definitely think that maybe bass is catching on a little bit. They're mm-hmm. starting to have more events up there, which is cool. And there's this little lake out in East New York that we haven't really mentioned yet. We haven't mentioned yet. And I, don't, yeah. I don't know if we're mentioning the name. It's, it's but a pretty good. I'm not talking about that one. Which one are you talking about? Champlain. Oh, Champlain. Champlain, I thought you were talking about our other little lake there. If you go and take a poll, no, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> if you go and take a poll of all the pros, I guarantee you 10% of them are going to say Champlain is their favorite lake. Yes, yeah, Scott Martin, I know he, his favorite lake is Champlain. There's a lot of guys, their favorite lake in the world is Champlain. It is as diverse as anywhere you've ever been, I promise. It's huge. It's gigantic. Massive. 112 <laughs> miles end to end. The bottom end, you're cranking, you're frogging, you're flipping, you're punching. Top end, you're drop shotting in 40 feet of water for smallmouth. Like, it's diverse. It's as diverse as it gets. It's kind of a northern thing. It's cool. And I love it. There's a ton of different lakes in between that you never even see tournaments on. I mean, I went to a lake this summer, Saranac Lakes. Excellent fishing. I was catching 20 smallmouth a day. Not a lot of big ones because they don't have those gobies in there. But, I mean, excellent fishing. Excellent. It's New York is... It's unbelievable. Yeah, we got we got a video coming out uh, on a very secretive lake in New oh, York. I forgot we videotaped that. And <laughs> spoiler, uh. we caught more bass than I have ever caught before in my life. More bass, <laughs> and we can't wait to show you guys because it was insane. It was the most fun I've had bass fishing. I think I told and, you. And yeah, this guy was like, "We need to go fish this place. It's amazing." And we did. And once again, New York Lake. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. It's fun. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, I mean, it's just, I think New York right now is definitely on fire. I'm definitely can't wait to see what happens in no, Oneida. No, don't get me wrong. Alabama, Tennessee, there's so much untapped potential. And I'm I'm probably not hating on, but um, I'm probably not really giving that, those states as much credit for their fishing because I'm not good there. Um but, I mean, like, if you talk to a guy from the south, they go up north and they go, why is this so easy? Because it's honestly easy. It's like, easy. Catching fish in the north in New York is so much fun. Um, one day I'll figure out Tennessee and Alabama, and I'll be able to say those are better. But right now is not that day. <laughs> also, I really want to get up to Michigan. Michigan? I hear that's some of the same exact stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is. Um, but, yeah, I mean... New York, man. It's going to be cool to see what happens in that open. Yeah, open's going to be fun to see. I'm, I'm sure it's not going to be excellent. 
Oneida is a great lake. It's a fun lake. Um, all those northern New York lakes really are. Yeah. I feel like there's places I'm missing. I mean, two years ago, m- more New York stories. Last year, last summer, I was at the St. Lawrence with my family, just family trip. And there was one day it was blowing like like 15 to 20 out of the northwest, which... Nasty. No, southwest. I'm sorry. Yeah, it gets really ugly out there. Oh, yeah. So I took my boat and I went to like this little nothing lake, Butterfield Lake, little tiny lake and caught like 25 fish. I mean, just flip the grass all day and like literally put the troll motor down and just started flipping. It was so much fun. I mean, the north, this is why I want the tournaments in the summertime to be out there because you don't national you can't match it. Up there. You can't match this stuff. I mean, if I was Bass, I would look national championship next year being at Champlain. I really would. <laughs> it's a big body of water. They'd it'd be a great host place. Yeah. It'd be cool. I think they should do it. I, I honestly like the idea of putting the national championship somewhere like off the wall. Like I like the Bemidji stuff, even though that sucked. Like put it on like one of the other finger lakes. Put it on Conesis. I guarantee you Maybe three teams have ever fished there. (laughs) Maybe. And that place can put out. I mean, all these places can. But obviously, we're just speculating. We are speculating. It's obvious. Um, But, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, We love you guys. so many great We love you guys tuning in. So, if you got a place that you think should be mentioned up north. That was our Bassmaster review. Yeah. We'll talk about soon. We'll talk about uh, maybe we'll do like a national championship review. We'll talk about the, Chick. Two, the two national championships. We'll talk yeah. about uh, talk Red Potomac. River or not Red River, uh, Potomac. Red River was the year before. I'm sorry. We'll talk about Potomac and we'll talk about Chickamauga, the two college national championships, FLW and Bass. Um, we did our Watts Bar recap, so you know what happened there. So we'll kind of go over the national championships and then hopefully by then we're going to be coming around to. So waiting on some schedules. Some schedules. Yeah. We'll talk FLW at some point, too. Yep. There's still a couple more tournaments the happening. The problem with FLW is there's so many different divisions, yeah. so it's kind of hard for us to recap so. them all. Um, maybe we'll try and get in we'll touch with some. We'll pull out the cool ones. How about that? We'll pull out the cool ones from yeah. FLW. Or we could try and get in touch with some guys that fish those different swings and ask yeah. them how it went. Feel free to DM us. Yeah, uh, that would be awesome, guys. If you fished any of the FLW college series that were not Southeast, we fished them. Please reach out to us. Say you want to be on the podcast, and uh, we'll figure a way to get you on here and talk about those because we honestly don't have any info. Nope. I mean, we could look it up, but we like to hear from people who were there, hear what it was like, what went on, what was the weather. We appreciate you guys results tuning in. Yeah. To another episode of Bass Now Radio. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Presented by Sunrise Bassin. We really appreciate all the support. Share it up, man. Share it up. Let's gotta get it, get out to as many college guys as you can. That's that's what we're here for. Is we oh, wanna yeah. we wanna keep the college guys oh, interested. Yeah. So tune in, tune in, tune in next week. Next week, national championship review. We just figured that out. It's gonna be fun. It always is. Gonna be a fun one. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you, people. Hope you guys catch them this weekend. Tight too. lines. Tight lines. <laughs>